Hi everybody, this is Lee, and with this video I'm providing another update on the Dakota Access Pipeline, and then information on some other pipeline actions as well. Um, this is from Mike.com, and this article is saying that the Dakota Access Pipeline had sprung two additional leaks, that there was a leak earlier and then two additional, and that a smaller leak of 20 gallons um, no, actually, on March 3rd, 84 gallons leaked, and that was Watford City, North Dakota. And then two days later, on March 5th, another leak occurred, about 20 gallons, and this was in rural Mercer County, North Dakota. And then there was an additional leak, the most widely known incident today, and that was April 4th. That was at a pump station north of Crandon, South Dakota and the 84 gallons leaked before officials contained it. And so that's three leaks, and the pipeline is not fully operational yet. And we come to see that everything that Energy Transfer told us about their pipeline building ability was not as, um, it was pretty overconfident um, based on what we're seeing. Today with Dakota Access Pipeline and then with the pipelines that they built in the past, that they weren't able to build a pipeline that did not leak and that people knew that and that's why they fought against it. And the pipeline is leaking um, and it's not fully operational. And so Dallas Goldtooth, he's a campaigner with the Indigenous Environmental Network, he says that it's uh, the, the spills remind us that it's not a matter of if a pipeline leaks or spills, it's a matter of when a pipeline leaks or spills. And so none of the spills were large enough to warrant a category, categorization as significant. Um, but what is it going to take? How many more leaks are we going to see? Um, how much destruction has to be manifest until, you know, someone says this far no more? Um, anyway, uh, that's Dakota Access Pipeline and the fact that um, there are additional pipelines in the works and that there are actions at these pipelines. I'm going to see if I can find an article. Um, this is Indigenous Rights uh, or Indigenous, uh, Indigenous Alliance launches divestment campaign against the U.S. and Canadian pipelines. That the divestment movement is ongoing and it's continuing and we see that there is no let up in sight, um, that um, there was tremendous, tremendous action and many learning experience from DAPL and that people did extraordinary work in documenting what happened at DAPL and that there's a drone technician who was able to provide us the viewing public a lot of footage of what was occurring there um, and that was how we all around the world were able to circumvent what the sheriff's office was telling us about what was happening we, we could see it for ourselves and so those learning experiences have gone to other pipeline actions um, and that there are four pipelines that are in the process um, and that people are trying to put pressure on those um, pipelines. Uh, energy Transfer Partners, of course, and then three companies that are involved in the Canadian Tar Sands Pipeline. These three additional companies are TransCanada, which owns the Keystone Excel Pipeline, which was approved by Donald Trump, and also Energy East Pipeline. Kinder Morgan, which recently got a green light to expand Trans Mountain Pipeline from Alberta to British Columbia. And then Enbridge, which plans to replace the Line 3 pipeline, which runs between Alberta and Wisconsin. And that there are 64 banking institutions that fund at least one of the pipelines on the full divestment list. But there are actually 17 banks that fund the Dakota Access Pipeline and then all four pipelines from Canada. And so these banks are a part of each of these pipelines. And um, they are specifically being targeted and the banks include the Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, 
Deutsche Bank, Barclays, Bank of Montreal, Scotia Bank, and Wells Fargo. And so I'm going to post a link to the list of 64 banking institutions that are being targeted. And then um, there are the 17 banks that are specifically being targeted. The people are, are fighting back, that so they are learning uh, different methods. The divestment movement, of course, is continuing. I'll post links on how you can participate um, in the Defund DAPL campaign and then other campaigns um, like the Indigenous Action Network. Uh, and you can see for yourself um, how people are trying to um, uh, consider the betrayal uh, that they're experiencing. Um, and there's another article by Lois Marie Gibbs called The Fight Back for Energy Independence Over Corporate Profits and how she is rallying us, the citizens, to fight against the lies that we're being told about energy independence when the energy is being spent overseas and it's not helping us become independent. And the fact that the jobs that are being promised are minimal as well. And that there are other forms of energy that create additional jobs and that create actual independence because they are used domestically, that they are not exported. Wind energy, sun energy, wave energy, offshore energy, biomass, things like that, that is used domestically, stateside. And that's where our energy independence comes from. So I'm going to post a link to these articles in the description. You can hopefully get an understanding of the um, fights against these very harmful pipelines, of the contamination that they leave behind, uh, of the soil, the water, um, and then also the overriding eminent domain issues that are being abused, um, and that the fact that people are combining their efforts to fight back, whether it's farmers or ranchers, um, environmentalists, people that want to serve as caretakers and stewards of the land, um, that they are fighting back for that ability to do that. And so um, I'll let you read and catch up. Good luck.